Hello and welcome to Show Studio. This is our second head-to-head -head dedicated to men's uh, fashion weeks. Uh, we're going to discuss Milan today. I'm Mima Viglezzo and I welcome back the great Stavros Karelis. Thank you for being back. Thank you for having me. Um, we're going to discuss Milan and Milan is usually the, you know, classic uh, commercial place. Mm -hmm. Let's say, or the Prada place, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which in a way continues to be, <laughs> luckily. But um, there is this new kid mm -hmm. on the on block. the street, on the block, <laughs> uh, coming up called Sunny. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, brand that was very much the talk in town this season, mm -hmm. uh, founded barely three years ago by um, two young uh, boys, men mm -hmm. from southern Italy originally. Mm -hmm. Uh, Loris Mezzina and Simone Rizzo, uh, who are originally marketeers. Mm -hmm. One uh, was working as a merchandiser, I think, a visual merchandiser at Gucci. Mm -hmm. um, and they have launched this collection. It's, it's all about their narrative. It's all about being mm -hmm. happy, being natural, being spontaneous. Um, they uh, work very much with, l not logos, but um, statements. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they make fun of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it works. Yes. Actually, their first collection was sold for a half a million or something mm -hmm. like that, which first is a lot of money for a first collection, mm -hmm. first two years. So my thing is the following, mm -hmm. and since I'm talking to someone who spots talent and, and is very, very uh, quick in, in embracing things that seems weird, and uh, so what about Sunny? What do you think? <laughs> Well, it's it's a bit tricky for me to be to be honest because um, coming across with Sunny and looking at it, um, don't get me wrong, I see a really nice collection. Uh, see things that they are very well put together, uh, and it makes sense. It's something easy, it's something wearable, it's something that I guess people you know can buy. Um, to me specifically, uh, it's always very important to understand the message and understand the connection, understand the, um, the world, the creative world that the, a designer mm -hmm. belongs to. Um, okay, so what's the message here? I, I, that's, that's, my, yeah. that's, that's my tricky situation because I cannot really clearly um, see the whole visual language. I mean, I can see the, um, that, um, uh, that approach that is basically a bit like teasing, a bit fun. Um, I mean, I see the logos that they have changed it from like, we all should be feminist, we all should be sunny. Um, Tom Forever from, uh, um, from a space, yes. Uh, I, ca I, can, I can tell their references. What I cannot tell at the moment, for me specifically, is what is the brand about? Well, which brings me to mm -hmm. talk about what I think it's a kind of laziness, but not only mm -hmm. <laughs> in the designers or designing world, but also in, I don't know, the buyers, but the press, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, probably Milan needs something new, mm -hmm. Milan needs something younger and fresh, I agree. and this is it. Yeah. And there, again, there's nothing wrong, these kids are cool kids mm -hmm. dressed in a way that it's mm -hmm. fun, mm -hmm. but they're just wearing clothes, yes. which is what Vetmo did. So, yes. you know, Vetmo gave these kids the possibility of doing that, except that Vermont did it better, but that's another discussion, that's another panel. <laughs> so I think this is more styling and marketing than I fashion. So. I think I'm so too. not saying I'm against it, okay. I'm wondering will this bring fashion forward? Um, with a capital F. I, I, you, put it, you put it in a very right perspective here because um, it's, it's not, when, when we talk about fashion and emerging designers and, and young brands, is um, what the brand has been created to do. I mean, when I'm thinking about it is uh, if, if the commercial aspect is very, very important to them and they just want to become this brand that is selling a lot of quantities, you know, applied to a wide range of customers, but, you know, it, they, they, they don't need to, to become the next, you know, uh, designers that are going yeah, to change things. Why would anybody pay for that hoodie or those yellow trousers? Probably 250, 350. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
instead of buying them at H&M. So uh, what's the difference? I mean, I haven't seen it, so maybe yes. it's... Did you see it? Uh, no, I there? didn't. No, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't so there. Maybe so maybe they're made fantastically well. I'm sure, I'm know. sure they are. I'm sure they are because, you know, you can tell that there is, a specifically with this type of um, brands, you know, the, 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 the actual garments, are made really, really okay, well. In so production, good, I'm, I'm good thinking, reason. yes, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know that the production also has been sorted because also with the both designers' backgrounds, I think that they would have paid um, detail into what's happening. My, and I think you, you put it right in the beginning, um, that I think every fashion week right now needs to come out with what's the new blood, what's the imaging designers that we have to showcase. It's great that we have the Versace and Prada and everyone else here, but actually, you know, if you look at the, the official schedule, who is the young designer? What is the proposal about There's like this? Is, with Milan. Yes. So uh, I think also this is what happened in a lesser extent uh, with Paris Fashion Week at some point. Before Vetemon, if you saw uh, the official schedule of Paris, there wasn't anything that was uh, coming out super strongly uh, from the emerging designer scene. Um, and I think that this is what's happening right now with Milan. They uh, somehow, when the journalists, press and buyers are there, they need to, uh, apart from reporting about all the, the big ones, they have to report about, you know, the, the a young one at least that and captures the vibe uh, where the city is, what they're doing, what they like. Um, to me, it's a bit too commercial. Uh, too commercial in the sense that there are quite a few things that perhaps I, uh, I have seen or experienced elsewhere. So, uh, w which my message there is a bit more clear. When, uh, I mean, you know, if I think someone like Gosha, for example, that I can see and I can tell a few references here. Um, with can you? Yes, I can. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. And then so you that's know, the reference. Uh, I, and, uh, I, I mean, couldn't even find the real reference. It's yet. it's it's a lot of you know different uh, small things that you know you can you can read through it. But there are a lot of brands right now that they're doing a similar thing. The difference between those brands is that who is genuine, who is doing it for the right reasons, has a bigger story to tell here, and who is doing it because it's just trendy, it's just because it's hyped, it's just because this is what uh, a buyer is going to ask you, that this is what I want from my store. That's not the right story. The right story is the designer proposes, the buyer chooses from that proposal. If they don't like the buyers, they can move somewhere else. But you cannot play the game uh, reversed, because if you try That's to satisfy... That's very interesting. Can, can you, can yes. you explain it better? Yes. So, what do you mean by the other way around? I'll, I'll explain to you. You know, I have uh, quite a few designers that they come to me and they say, imagine designers, of course, and young designers, and they say, um, my collection is so machine. -y. And I'm like, really? Is, is, why? Uh, you, know, you know why is machine? -y? And they show me something that is like completely wrong for me. Um, and what, what I'm saying by that is that you, as, as a designer, you cannot satisfy the buyers. You cannot satisfy the press as well. You cannot design a collection thinking about... To please to travelers please, and machine Yeah, or to please Dover Street, or to please, you know, Bechtoff and Goodman or Barneys. Or the review. Yes, you cannot think that way. What you can think is that I'm going to do something, and if it works is going to work for everyone or for the few selected stores that I'm planning to put my collection understand it get it and they go to go full support behind it um, showing the whole real world of mine now um, that's that's the big difference here uh, I've seen designers that are designing specifically for shops and always always and this is the biggest the, the biggest uh, part that is very very tricky um, and they have to be very careful about that is that what happens when that store drops you? Because it can happen. If your sales somehow decline, a store after a few seasons yeah. can say, I'm not working with you, you can't anymore. Keep the real so for if you, if you have work. built your whole brand based on one store or one aesthetic, what happens to you after that? Yeah, but also apart from mm. that, which is a practical yeah. way of seeing it, yeah. whatever you do, if you're a creative in any field, then mm -hmm. whatever you do is done with an objective mm -hmm. that it's not something that comes from within you, yes. then it can't work anyway, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. then it's not honest, it's not credible. I think, I've read a few things that these two guys said, I like them, I mean, I think they're quite honest. I and agree. it's quite them, which for me it's a good point and maybe they will develop more of a signature. Mm -hmm. What I miss here, and you said it very beautifully, is what's your message? Mm -hmm. Why, you know, mm -hmm. is it about 
having a carefree style in mm -hmm. Milan and we're going into my next topic about Milan which is exactly the opposite and Milan needs something like that mm -hmm. or is it a new fashion that you believe you know will bring it forward you know there are a few references also there's even the hats that Steven did for <laughs> Marc Jacobs mm -hmm. uh, a year mm -hmm. ago I mean there are I think it's ironical but I haven't yeah. decided yet. But, but in order for me to be ironic and take an irony into what's happening in the current fashion system, I think you have to push it in that level where you know you go there and it, the, the irony it's a hundred percent present as well clear, you know yeah. and very clear that I'm here to do this if and, and, and create a challenge you know because you cannot play both ways you cannot play you know the safe way and also to challenge and have an irony yeah. you know you're going to be all safe or you know you will yeah, but create it's funny because irony. here i see more irony than anything else yes. so i think mm -hmm. i don't know yeah but um I see you safe. know <laughs> to, to keep an eye on it and um the press liked it i, I agree press, with you the press uh they have a little bit followers sometimes and they mm. all now decided that this is the thing to talk about in milan and here we are they, talking about it as well and they also have said that they, they they got big in south korea which is actually for me is a market that i respect a lot in in some ways because they they have a very good take an aesthetic on, on clothes in quite a lot of times. They as the South Korean. Uh, as, as South Korean, yeah. So they said that, they, uh, sorry, Sunny Brand said that, you know, that was our first market that picked up on us okay. through like social media and Instagram. Uh, I think that the, the guys are doing a great job and I think, as you said, they have all the elements around them. You know, they, you can see good, um, a good take on clothes, they look good, uh, press loves them, you know, uh, buyers are there and supporting them, they have a very good list of stores. I think that as soon as um, they they connect all these elements in a, in, a, in a stronger way and go out with a very strong message, I think this is perhaps when it connects and shows us the real message behind it. Something that perhaps you and I cannot see at this stage. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah, that's very possible. <laughs> so to be continued. Yes. Then Milan. Mm -hmm. So apart from the new designer of Palzileri, who I think I don't remember his name. I'm sorry. Who I think did a good job. Um, there was n not many newness, newness <laughs> not big newness in general. Uh, probably the most futuristic show was Fendi with this new way of bonding mm -hmm. fur instead of teaching it. I don't think that fur is futuristic in itself. Mm -hmm. I think it's the passé, but. Uh, you know, they had this take into, they, they, and, and even Silvia Fendi said, uh, Silvia Venturini Fendi said, the future and the past are both futuristic or something like that. So she mixed, you know, some references of it, her own brand from the past mm -hmm. and with new technologies mm -hmm. on working, especially with leather and fur. Mm -hmm. And I think the collection was interesting. I it was quite you. surprising for Fendi. I agree with uh, you. I never really cared about Fendi men and I thought this was noticeable, which is a good thing. <coughs> I, I, I completely agree with you actually, you know, um, I didn't know you would, you would talk about Fendi and I, one of the collections that I've seen and I, I uh, as soon as I saw it I said mm, that's, that's very interesting, exactly what you said for Fendi, you know, to do that and I think the presentation is also something that uh, um, because I think many designers, many big powerhouses did in Milan this, this season when they went back to some original roots there. Well, and let's I can talk about Prada yes, and Versace. Yes. yes, and we see, and I saw in Fendi, you know, that's, that's kind of like the right way to do it. Yeah. You know, you go back to the archives, but actually you bring them with a very new way out. Um, that's a right thing. We were talking about Ralph Simmons very recently, and we're saying that he's someone that, you know, recently has brought back a few of the things from his past collections, but he's connected them with something that is super current, and this is why it looks so fresh and new. Uh, let's talk about the other well, ones. Well, but I, I, want to, I want yeah. to build on this because I have this impression that the fact that especially the established brands mm -hmm. and designers are uh, following this trend mm -hmm. of quoting themselves, mentioning themselves, you know, like uh, using their past as a reference for what they're doing and making it relevant and fresh again, could be a sign of this heavy reference fatigue mm -hmm. or the fact that they need to show what they did first because mm. there is so much 
referencing, mm. i.e. copying going on, that <laughs> maybe, you know, the Miuchas of the world and the Rafs, you know, the, those people, even Mr. Armani, and I'm going into his show soon because there's something quite clever about mm -hmm. that. Um, these people, they need to, and Donatella, of course, with the brother, legacy and everything, they need to show that they've done it first. I, I, I th so it's I, not only about them and Alessandro anymore, but it's for about sure. themselves. I will tell, uh, I'll, I'll say something. I mean, the, those, those three, I think there are like very uh, three different cases that have been put on the table. I mean, if I see Ralph Nuccia and Donatella Versace, for example, um, uh, Ralph has an, an extremely unique take on, on things when he does them and when he decides to bring back an idea in his collection, it, it never is the same. It has been developed in, in such an extent where you know it's a completely new way of showing things and it always um, a reason behind it mm -hmm. uh, and it's not a commercial reason behind it. It's, it's always connected with something bigger of a storytelling that he needs to say again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's my experience at least so far with the brand. With um, Nietzsche Prada, I'm a huge fan. I mean, it's, it's, uh, for me, there are two shows that I always check every single season, you know, to understand uh, what is going to happen for the next six months. It's one, it's Prada, Prada and Rob Simmons, yeah. those two. I have to say, and I'm, I'm really sorry about what I'm going to say, is that I wasn't a fan of Prada show this season. And everyone has jumped and said, you know, this show is incredible. And I looked at it and I really wanted to love it, but I couldn't because um, my, perhaps it's a buyer that came out of me. Yeah, and so he why, said, tell me why, I'm interested. I'll tell you what, I think as a collection, absolutely beautiful. Um, she could have done, uh, I mean, it's, it's nylon, it's Prada, uh, it's everything that everyone wants by Prada. Uh, so great. To me, it yells at me that we need to make sales. And that I don't like because a brand and on the status of someone like Prada or someone like the big ones, I don't want to see any type of insecurity there. I want like, to feel secure when I see a collection. Mutual Prada has one, and, and sorry, because I need to finish that, sorry, because sorry, I don't want like, to be misunderstood, because that can be very misunderstanding thing, what I'm it's saying. It's very here. clear what you're saying. You know, but what I'm trying to say with Mutual Prada, she belongs to the people that she pushes the boundaries. You know, everyone else is waiting on her to be, that's my world. For me, that seems easy. You know, it seems easy in a way of, you know, Yes, of course, nylon is Prada. And of course, you know, everyone expects that it's going to look really, really beautiful. But also the references of the fabrics on the previous extremely successful collections, it's again shows to me a bit of an easiness, which sometimes designers are allowed to, but when you're in the status and the caliber of, of Nietzsche Prada, um, I want to see fashion. And I want to see fashion because she's the only one that she can do it right now with a few others. Okay, I, there's nothing, not a word you say in the past three minutes that I don't agree with, so mm -hmm. I totally, I am with you, but mm -hmm. my role here is to be the devil's advocate, so yes. I'm going to say this. Go. Would you say the same, even if you didn't know that Prada has had some um, negative growth mm. uh, in the past mm. few years? Would you say the same if um, there mm. was indeed, uh, well, no, let, let's no, answer no, no. that one first, yes. because also uh -huh. I agree with you and mm -hmm. I think it's sad when someone at the caliber of Miucha mm -hmm. has to do that. I don't think she wants to do that, but she has a company which is That's quite big. She has, she has a husband too. who's, by the way, I noticed that now she has the titles co-CEO, mm -hmm. which she didn't. She was only the creative director, so, and, you know, um, so, so there is a moment where you say, if we don't sell because we're not relevant anymore, maybe let's try and do what was relevant. Mm -hmm. That's insecurity. Uh, well, yeah, it's I mean, also realism. It is realism. You're right. You know, it is. I'm not. I know what you're yes, saying. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. But I'm trying to be. You know, what's the alternative? Going bust? Mm, no, no, of course not. But I. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, of course, everyone knows that. You know the growth and how much everyone needs to grow. And of course, the competition is huge at the moment in the market. Um, but I think that uh, it, it's, it's I, would, I would make that comment regardless because I made that comment earlier on and I said that my problem at the moment with the big ones 
is that I see an overall insecurity that they start looking a lot like the young ones, like the emerging ones, the emerging brands, the emerging designers. And I think, you know, that everywhere the commercial directors have to understand, wherever they are, in whichever companies they're placed, that the reason is that you cannot look left and right. Yeah. You have to look inside yeah. you and you have to look like as a company because what is relevant is, is not already existing in your company. You yeah. know, you have to find it out there. But I need to interrupt you yes. here because I think Prada's problem today uh -huh. is that, and I'm going to use a word that makes me cringe, but yes. it's like that it's not considered cool by the millennium. So two words that make me cringe. Mm. And let me explain to you mm -hmm. why I think mm -hmm. Um, Prada struggles to talk to the young people, mm -hmm. which is what Gucci has done perfectly. Perfectly done, you know? yeah. And, and, but Gucci doesn't do it only by creating a certain type of collection and styling it in a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's not only Alessandro's fashion, it's also Alessandro's language yes. in his communication. And they're not forcing it. Mm -hmm. People will say, Mima, you don't get it, it's marketing. But anyway, it doesn't feel forced. Mm -hmm it's they really talking not only to the young people but with them mm -hmm. you know all their collaborations whatever whatever mm -hmm. Prada which for people like you and me mm -hmm. and people in the industry or, or women my age is you know Top. the epitome yes. of elegance of course. not cool but elegant fashion whatever mm -hmm. for those young people it's not that it's not they don't know it mm -hmm. because they haven't started started speaking the language mm -hmm. and it's not only about the fact that they were slow to go to the internet they were slow to mm -hmm. sell online of mm -hmm. course all of this but even if now they sell online mm -hmm. they, they do not speak millennial language mm -hmm. and so i'm not sure that doing nylon again because <laughs> we were mad about our yeah. nylon backpack yeah my niece, who's 21, doesn't mm -hmm. care about the Prada mm -hmm. nylon backpack. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I so much agree. I, I agree with you in every single point you made. The my, my 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 discussion and my debate in my mind about Prada is that she can still do the nylon. She can still do all what she's done in this collection, which is great. Um, but she can present it, you know, if she wants to do the sales, so she does, she wants to do the commercial um, success in a much, much different way. Because when it comes down on the catwalk, and again, uh, uh, when I see it, I see a beautiful done collection. But for me, yeah, she always push, <laughs> yes, of course. And she, but she always push the boundaries so far. And if she, she's not gonna be able to do it, and if, other few others are not be able to do it, then we're heading somewhere where um, the customers are dictating the designers what job they need to do, and uh, the the designers, especially on That's her, a big statement, you, you know, just yeah, and 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 designers have to to remain on on their feet on the ground. What means a few could seasons Mew down? Just, could Miucha's creativity be tired or exhausted? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that. I, I think that that exactly uh, financial, no pressure, but perhaps decline, you know, uh, and, and uh, pressure. Uh, pressure, you know, might have gone into the whole um, questioning in terms of like what we should show in a catwalk, but this woman has changed fa the fashion, you know, the way we know it. I mean, uh, th th there isn't anyone else that probably you can think like, designers, yes, she's one of the she's, biggest I mean, I for mean. everyone. This yeah. this woman is, um, is, is she's, she's amazing. Yeah. She's, she's uh, a goddess in when it comes but down to the fashion industry. Even Mucha is a human being and she is. she's confused by what's going on. And, and that's why she needs to get not, to. She's in her late <laughs> 60s, it's not her language, I tell you, it's not easy. Yes, but I I think that uh, so far she's a teacher and she she has taught us the language and that's why I think that she can teach the millennials very very well about what is cool if she talks to them yeah but she's she, not talking to them yeah she would she probably might oh, I hope so <laughs> I still I still love Prada yes but you know I'm certainly not a millennial so um, <laughs> I would like to say a word or two about our money. I never yes. discuss our money, we never discuss our money because people say like it's boring and I'm going to tell you why I wanna say a word or two about our money. First of mm. all, he changed the face of ready to wear mm -hmm. 50 years ago or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you know, th that has some merit. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, it's still a brand that has a turnover of billions. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking close to 10 billion. So, you know, we can say it's boring and I don't care as much as we want, but it's a big pillar in the economy of fashion. 100%. I thought it was pretty <laughs> weird. I mean, it starts with this American gigolo look back kind of style, which mm -hmm. is not very different than that, you know, with the corduroy and the velvet and the uh, deconstructed jacket, mm -hmm. which is a very, uh, him too, you know, like I invented the deconstructed yes. jacket, uh, with some try to be, you know, cooler in the styling mm -hmm. and to get into suits mm -hmm. with uh, shirts and ties mm -hmm. that are suits with shirts and ties the way they have been mm -hmm. for 300 years. Mm -hmm. And so here they are. So mm -hmm. mm, it's, it was quite shocking because people were even afraid of pronouncing the word tie in the past two, three seasons. Uh, we don't even know if people, I mean, there are people still dressing like that to go to work because oh, yes. there are still lawyers and bankers and stuff like that. But is it relevant to put them on the catwalk without really changing anything? I'm not disturbed by them, they're beautiful, but mm -hmm. that, that, does it mean anything? Does it matter? That, what do you think? You, you, mm. you, your business is at the opposite spectrum, yes. so I'm very interested in... Uh, yes and no, because uh, tailoring, I mean, uh, let's face it also, you know, tailoring is probably the biggest trend that is coming out in the last, like, two or three years. I mean, everyone is tending... No, but every, no, not this tailoring, but everyone is tending into the tailoring yeah. side, you know, at the moment. Um, it's the hoodie fatigue. Story. Yes, exactly. It's fantastic, but it's the... Oh, no, 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 completely. You know, yes, 100%. So, so you, ch the, everyone is standing into the tailoring, looking at the tailoring. We're looking at the tailoring as well. Um, and everyone does. But there is a lot of tailoring out there. And you have to, <laughs> to offer something that uh, speaks and talks uh, a different perspective. If his business is made by these suits, he's selling really well this type of suits, yeah, which he's probably I'm, I'm sure he does, uh, then um, he, he's in a place where he doesn't perhaps need to prove something because... Yeah, but why do you put them on a catwalk? I mean, <laughs> the, 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 we don't care when they were designed. They could have been designed two years ago. Yes. And again, mm -hmm. they're right for our money. They're certainly elegant. But my question is, and probably it, it brings mm -hmm. me into the question, what, what's a catwalk for? Ah, that's a really good question. I mean, actually. I had this problem with that's Canali a, when yeah. I was uh, consulting with them, and, and probably Mr. Zenias had the same prep. You know, they can't really be different than what they are mm -hmm. because they have clients and they're successful. Mm -hmm. But then why even bothering? Or do they, should they bother? Uh, it's, it's just a very, uh, uh, to me, a fashion show is a very, very old format, which pretty soon is going to change. And I think that the Do Imagine Designers, it yes, it will. Imagine Designers are changing their format 100%. I mean, I know very successful brands that they, they never done a show or presentation, and they're doing really well. And I'm not just talking commercial sales, I'm talking about like also the impact image and sale. image and everything. Mm. And I think Not that- Not image sale, image wise, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no worries, image wise. And then I, I know that more and more brands are looking into this type of format from the young ones, from the young imaging designers, because um, they cannot afford to do a show. It's super expensive. And also they don't understand what's the point of it anymore. Yeah. Because it's something extremely, uh, elitist. It's, it's for a very small period, uh, very small, it's 10, 15 minutes to put a huge production with huge money into it. Yeah. And then uh, where all this goes, goes like on social media perhaps and a press release. Well, you can do these formats with like putting half of your money into do like something, a really cool film or a, a beautiful lookbook. Does, and it, you have present does it, it have the same impact in the world? I'll tell you what, it doesn't have an impact. It doesn't have an impact on the, on the printed magazines because they want the catwalk images to be able to be featured. However, now with like the everyone goes online, they can present the collections in a different way. Um, th there are designers that they don't do anything, but they are the coolest. Martine Rose from London, fashion. Yeah, week. she didn't this year, but she also just had a child. Yes, so. but Alix, Matt Williams, yeah, she never, does. never, never. Yeah, but should. well, let, let me challenge yes. you on this. Yes, I who like knows, Alex? I mean, don't think mm -hmm. of your. Circle, oh, don't no, no, think no. of us. Yes. I have to know Alex because I'm doing this job. But yes. 
Ask, go out in the street. I go, I, I, am, in <laughs> I am in the street. That's why I'm saying to you that because I know the, the sales and I know the, 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 the store list and also the press that is coming out for leaks, it's one of the really, really okay. successful brands that are coming up there. It's not just a Very well thing. deserved. By Very well way. deserved, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and, and a lot of work that has been put into this brand. But it's not just them. It's, it's a lot of people at the moment are we looking the format of shows and presentation? Um, it's. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to disappear. I'm just saying that you know it's not only one thing. For George Armani, and I think this is exactly the opposite from Prada, for example, is that perhaps he doesn't have any more the pressure, you know, of you so have. He certainly you know, doesn't know what to do with his yes, money. Yes, because his he company does, after <coughs> You know, enough. he doesn't. Ha he doesn't have no, perhaps the pressure to no. be like, I want to be the no. coolest, or I want to, to to push the trends in a way that no one else is doing. So he kind of like enjoys what he likes to do. Well, 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 well. We just no? saw his mm -hmm. couture show in Paris, and mm -hmm. I know we're talking men here, but he did a couture collection that was really weird because it was all short and an effort to appeal to young mm -hmm. women that were couture. So he does have a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. He certainly doesn't have financial pressure. I'm guessing it's everyone His has. company is his only, and he's now 84 or 85. Mm -hmm. There's no succession plan. He has no children. So, you know, there's no money pressure. However, you know, there is a big ego there, and these people have been standing, you know, the, the, the George Armanis, the Karl Lagerfeld, they've been standing forever. They made fashion the way we know it today. We owe them And then fashion. there's the, yeah. you know, there's the Alessandros and the Demna yes. and the Sunei, and these yeah. kids mm -hmm. on the block mm -hmm. arriving and changing the system. But yet again, I wonder if this particular show, mm -hmm. apart from Armani, he needs to open and close Milan with Armani and Emporio. That's the institution of Milan and mm -hmm. the business that goes into press and, uh, and uh, commerce and whatever. Oh, I mean, will you remember this? In no. no. But maybe you okay. would wear that <laughs> leather coat I, I, because it's I, beautiful. I, I might. But it's... it's no. It's it's not it's not a, a, a turning point for me, you know, this, this show. <laughs> not. No. Um, but um, also at the same time, it doesn't need everything to be because I think it's it's almost like amount of information. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have too much information right now. It's even from yes. the fashion industry. Yes. So I think it cannot be that everyone is going to be on the front line and everyone is going to finish that line first. You know, they're going to be the seconds, they're going to be the thirds, they're going to be the fourth, and this is going to change sometimes. Um, what we are sometimes more hard on a criticism is for the people that we expect them to finish first and ex at the finishing second or third. And this is when we become, I think, harder because yeah. our expectations are higher. Um, with some other brands, our expectations perhaps are not as high, so we take it as a given. And this is my take on, on a brand like Giorgio Armani, and this is a take of mine as a brand as Prada because perhaps my expectations are much higher <laughs> for that. That's for sure. Well, on these words, thank you very much for thank doing this with much. me, and I hope to see you next season. Yes, me Bye. too.